Hi, so I am live today. I didn't see any questions in the group, uh, but I am here if anyone wants to pop in. I'm on YouTube and on Facebook. And um, so I decided that today I would talk about the herbs that I use regularly, pretty much, um, throughout the year. And so I have all these different herbs. It's kind of messy. They're not really that organized. My husband does make teas every night for us for the next day. And so I think that he has an organization system that I don't know. So I'm going to try not to mess up his system. He makes a tea for me, a different tea for him. And then he makes us a bedtime tea each night and we alternate those. Um, you can get sensitive to specific herbs. And so we do like to rotate um, those, especially the evening ones. Um, when I went to the School of Natural Healing, we talked about that and, you know, getting used to different herbs. And Dr. Christopher would say, you know, take one day a week. If you take herbs, uh, may, maybe take Sunday off, which is a rest day for most of us. It has been for um, years and years and years, right? And so, like, for me, even my supplements, I take them Monday through um, Saturday, and then I don't take them on Sunday. Now, medicines that I have to take, so I had radiation for my thyroid. I do have to take thyroid medicine on Sunday. Um, so I will just go through some of these. I see someone has joined me live, which is fabulous. Um, if you have any questions, please ask in the group. Um, I'm just going through my herbs. And so I'm going to start down on the bottom. I know not all of you can see. Um, but so the first one is echinacea. Um, so this is something that I just, I usually make a tincture um, with echinacea. Here's one of my tinctures here. And I did a video recently about that and we use it mostly for immune support if we feel like we've been exposed to some sort of virus um, or we feel like we're getting sick then we will take echinacea a lot of this the same way a lot of people do elderberry um, i did just order some elderberries recently i haven't made my own elderberry syrup before but i'll do that I and mean, it's just not something that i've had a lot of experience with i've always used echinacea and so i didn't really need elderberry but now i can just alternate the two right um so another thing that we use this for is for insect bites and allergic reactions. Now, if we were having anaphylactic shock or something like that, then definitely call 911. Um, but if it is an allergic reaction, like swelling from a bee sting or something like that, then we immediately take um, echinacea for that. Next, I have lobelia. So lobelia is kind of one of those herbs that's kind of controversial. My lighting is a little off. Um, lobelia is called a thinking herb. Um, it is, if you take it in excess, you're going to throw up. Um, there have been studies where they use the extract of lobelia and have shown that it is toxic. Well, if you extract something from the herb, highly concentrated, then that is probably going to make you sick any herb. Um, but if you take lobelia, if you take too much, you're going to throw it up. And so is that toxic? Maybe. There's a reason why you're eliminating it, right? but you can't have too much if you're taking the whole herb, which an extract isn't a whole herb, but we're extracting some of it. Um, you're going to throw it up. You're not going to be able to ingest it. So this is something that um, will either make you throw up, eliminate, or calm things down. And so if you feel sick, like you feel like you're going to throw up, if you take a dropper full of lobelia, then you will throw up, which you felt like you were going to throw up, and then you'll feel better or you'll relax. Lobelia is often used in things um, for like asthma. If you have an asthma attack, and then sometimes if you throw up, then the asthma um, will stop. Now that's also a medical concern, so seek your doctor for that. So the medical disclaimer before I continue. And this is for educational purposes only. Please consult your um, medical provider with any of your medical concerns. I'm only educating you on how I use herbs in my regular daily life. Um, so the next one I have is goldenrod. And so it's so funny. This is something that we, we make tinctures of. Um, a lot of people um, say, oh, I'm allergic to goldenrod because when the goldenrod's out, they feel sick. They have these allergic reactions. Well, it turns out it's probably not the goldenrod. It's something else that is blooming at the same time. Um, the studies have shown that when you take goldenrod, it actually will help with those fall allergies. And so we take goldenrod in the fall. As a matter of fact, we were all talking about how we kind of had um, itchy eyes and scratchy throats. Um, and this morning I went, oh my gosh, it's almost time for goldenrod to bloom. We need to be taking our goldenrod. And so we just take it in the fall um, when it's about this time of year. If you're watching this recording later on, um, this is late August and where we live, goldenrod's going to start blooming soon. 
um, just to help with those fall allergies. Um, something else that I have is a lion's mane extract and Shane, Shane made this. I can't remember. I think this is a lion's mane that he forged. Um, anyway, it is fabulous for your immune health, brain health, things like that. Um, Molen oil. So this one is Molen um, flower oil. The flowers of Molen. Molen, where we live, is wild. It's everywhere, um, which is fabulous. And you may recognize it by these tall stalks with these little yellow flowers that are on the top. So it kind of looks like a, a cattail. I used to live along the marsh. Um, looks like a cattail, but it has um, little yellow flowers. And Molen is used for many different things. I have the Molen um, dried up here as well that I use in my regular tea for glandular health or thyroid health. But then I also, that one's leaves. This one is the flowers. And so the flowers are specific for the ears. And so I make a oil with the flowers. I dry the flowers and then I make this oil from those flowers, which they only bloom the second year of the plant. So it's hard to get and to collect them. Um, but I dry them, make the oil. And then if you have an earache, um, I will put a, three drops in one ear, rub it into my lymph nodes, put a piece of tissue or cotton in there, and then do the other side. If I have an earache on this side, I still put them in the other ear um, just to balance things out, just because sometimes ear infections can go to the other ear. Um, and when I use mullein oil, I don't have an earache, usually hours later, but definitely the next day. So this is great for children if they have ear issues. I love mullein oil. Once again, disclaimer, I am only educating. Um, another thing that I like to have is fenugreek. And fenugreek um, is used in some Asian dishes. Um, it smells and tastes a lot like maple syrup. And it's um, great for blood sugar control um, and many other things as well. Um, I like to have it, I mix it in my grinder here. I have milk thistle, um, black cumin seed, and fenugreek. And I put them in my grinder here. And I sprinkle this on my salad every day, my everyday salad that you've probably seen in another video. Um, um, for the blood sugar balancing properties. But it has other ones. It helps with detox. It helps with um, gut health and things like that. And um, so with my milk thistle, so milk thistle, I also have up here somewhere um, in the hard seeds. Um, some people take it in capsules. Some people make a tea with it. I have it in my coffee grinder here. Not coffee grinder, pepper grinder. Um, it is how it helps the liver to detox and regenerate. And so if you have any sort of liver damage, then it can actually help with that. Um, and then black cumin seed is also wonderful for blood sugar balancing. So that's what I have for my everyday salad with my dulse. This is also on my everyday salad. If you purchase seaweed, this one's dulse. Um, you want to make sure you buy from a reputable company um, because there are some unsafe waters. Um, and I do trust uh, Maine Coast. Um, do your own research. This one, um, so it even sells you on here. Great source of iodine. So it's a great way to supplement um, iodine. There aren't a lot of foods that are high in iodine. Um, dairy does have iodine because they clean um, with iodine and that's how it gets in there. So it's a, nat a natural source of dairy, but it is because that's what they clean with. Um, but seaweed is a natural source of iodine, which is necessary for the thyroid. Your thyroid is necessary for many different body processes. And so I strongly recommend that you start learning how to use sea vegetables if they're not a part of your regular diet. Or use something like dulse and sprinkle it on your salads. You can do seaweed, nor, um, nori wraps, sea, seaweed snacks, any of those things are great. Something else I like is this is bitter apricot seeds. Um, buy them organic, make sure they are bitter. Um, they, um, there are a lot of studies that show that they help with cancer prevention. And some people who have had cancer, um, it's helped them to reverse their cancer. Um, this one is red rubos. Rubos tea, that is wonderful for the heart. Um, this is passion flower. And you can see it's dried. We uh, harvested and dried our own. Um, it is wonderful for, I call it calming the monkey brain. If you have trouble sleeping at night because you just can't get your mind to stop going through thoughts, you're sitting here, maybe something happened today and you just can't get it out of your mind, passion flower can help with that. And so we put passion flower in our bedtime tea um, with some other things as well, but that's why we use passion flower. 
um, rose hips. So rose hips is 20 times higher in vitamin C than um, like oranges. And so this is great to add to different teas, smoothies, um, any sort of thing like that. Um, so I will just take like a half a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon if it's small like this and put it in my smoothies to have extra vitamin C. So vitamin C is not only antioxidant to help with skin health, um, help with uh, detox, um, help with cleansing, antioxidant, DNA repair, but also helps you to absorb your iron and your zinc. And so a lot of people know that they have issues with iron and zinc. Eat foods that are high in iron and zinc with something high in vitamin C. So if you have a smoothie with some greens that are high in iron and zinc, add in some pumpkin seeds and a little bit of rose hips, and that will help you absorb those minerals. Dandelion. So this is dandelion root. It is another one that we dig up and harvest dry and then put in here. Um, let me tell you something. I'm gonna get a little, do a little uh, sidebar. Let's see if I have one in here. I do. So we get these little, um, what are these called silica, food safe silica things that we put in our dried herbs to keep them nice and dry if we dry our own. Because you want to make sure that they are completely dry so you don't get any mold growth, and which can be a concern even when you purchase um, herbs. You want to make sure that you dry them and they stay nice and dry. So dandelion is wonderful for the liver and um, it helps to um, helps with detox, but it also helps to stimulate the gallbladder and um, release bile. Um, dandelion is also a great substitute for anyone who is trying to um, get off of coffee or caffeine. Lemon balm. Lemon balm grows here as a mint, and so it can, it here is spread all over our yard, and we love it, and so we dry it. And we always, we had add this to our teas. It is very relaxing and calming. I've talked about it on another video as well. Um, it has a really good flavor, kind of like a, it's a kind of a lemony mint flavor. Um, and it's great in the summertime, especially if you add it to different teas, make a sun tea with some lemon balm. Oh, wonderful. Um, in Europe, they use it um, specifically for cold sores. And so if you have cold sore, on your mouth or something, a herpes virus um, acting up, then lemon balm can help with that. Um, marshmallow, you can see I'm almost out. I love marshmallow root. I've done another video on marshmallow root. Um, this one's the powder and I put it in our smoothies and things like that. Um, you can make it into a paste. If you have something on your arm, like a cut or something, you can make it into a paste and put it on that to help with healing. Um, it's wonderful for aiding um, any sort of open wound or something like that, but internally it helps to coat the digestive tract, the entire mucous membranes. You have um, something going, a respiratory condition or something that a tea made with marshmallow root is helpful for that. If you're working on leaky gut, healing a leaky gut or something like that, marshmallow in your smoothies or marshmallow tea is great for that. And I'm getting Shane's order, everything out of order. Slippery elm is also very much like marshmallow root. Helps to coat the mucous membranes, very soothing. You can use it um, on wounds and things on, out externally, make a paste. Um, it's also great for someone who is having trouble eating. If you have someone who's going through chemo or radiation and they can't eat, someone who has a flu, you can make um, kind of like a gruel with slippery elm. Um, it has kind of a slightly sweet taste. Um, but it is a way to get some nutrition to someone who is not feeling well. Um, it's, um, you can make some, like a porridge, kind of like a cooked oatmeal or something like that um, with that. Um, then I also have reishi, another mushroom, which is wonderful for immune health and brain health. Better slide some of these before I get them all out of order. I have maca root. This is my maca root, and I add that to my smoothies. This is powder. Um, maca root is wonderful for hormone balancing. Um, it has many other wonderful benefits, antioxidant. And it's also a cruciferous vegetable, which you hear about a brassica or a cruciferous vegetable. Um, think of broccoli, collards, Brussels sprouts, all of those. It's in the same family. So it helps with detox, helps with DNA repair, and things like that. Skull cap. Skull cap is great for your nerves. Um, so um, Shane had shingles about a year ago. So we started adding skull cap. The only thing with skull cap is 
um, it's best as a tincture. So we did make a tincture and is best used long-term. So for someone who has um, something going on with their nerves, um, a neuropathy, something like shingles, something like that, Skullcap is great for that. And so even though that's been a year ago, we still occasionally add Skullcap to smoothies. Valerian root. So valerian root is very calming. It is wonderful to have in a bedtime tea, but the first time you drink it, um, do it on a night that you don't have to get up extra early tomorrow. Like our alarms go off at 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. And so the first time we had valerian, we did not take it when we had to get up at 4 a.m. Um, so do it on a night, take, drink it on a night where you don't have to set the alarm the next day so you can have a good sleep. Um, this one um, has been, there are some people who it has the opposite effect as well. And so you wanna make sure you can rest. And for us, we, in our house, we all love valerian, but it doesn't smell or taste good. Shane actually likes the smell, but I don't like the smell. So when we have it, we add Tulsi to that, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, when you have herbs, make sure you label them where you can read them. My chalk has worn off. So this is lavender. Lavender is also calming. It also tastes really good if you add it to the, um, what was that, valerian. Um, this is yellow dock. So yellow dock is fabulous. So it is wild here um, on our farm. Um, if you live near me, you probably have yellow dock in your yard. Um, so we dried it and put it in here. That has a yellow root. Um, you can kind of see the yellow on my, in my lighting, but it is um, very high in iron. And so it is great to add to teas and things like that. Great to add with that rose hips um, so that you absorb some iron. And the last one on this shelf is Shisandra berry, um, which I have here. It looks a lot like the rose hips. It's called the five spice herb. Um, it's very high in antioxidants and is used quite often in Chinese medicine. It is um, an adaptogen. So adaptogens are those things that you can take on a regular basis and they just help your body to adapt to stressors and things like that. So I rotate that in with my other adaptogens. So how are we doing on time? Okay, so I don't wanna keep going if I, I don't wanna drone on for anybody. All right, so here I have dried mimosa. I also did a video on mimosa. A mimosa is very calming and relaxing. Um, so we dried it when they bloomed and unfortunately we're almost out, but we'll put that in our bedtime tea sometimes. Um, chicory root. So this is chicory root. We also dried and ground that. Um, it is um, a prebiotic, which is wonderful to feed the good bacteria, bacteria in your gut. I mean, it's also high in nutrition and is a great coffee substitute. Um, horsetail. This is horsetail. Horsetail is very high in silica and helps your body with calcium to help with strong bones, hair, nails, and teeth. And so it is wonderful to add to different teas. Um, licorice root. I've talked about licorice root in other videos. It's very mucilaginous, um, which means it helps um, with all of your mucous membranes, your lungs, the respiratory tract, um, your stomach, your intestines, and it's specific to the adrenals. It's, it helps with um, adrenal fatigue is the term people use under, if you've been under a high stress. However, licorice root is not for anyone with high blood pressure. Usually if you have adrenal fatigue, you have low blood pressure. And so licorice root is okay. But if you have high blood pressure, don't include licorice root. Licorice root is very sweet. And so if you add a little bit of licorice root to your other teas, it'll add a sweetness to it. I absolutely love it. Um, and I don't have high blood pressure, so don't have to worry about it. But I just put like a quarter teaspoon in my teas. This is the root. If I have the powder, then I don't even I put in maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. It is that sweet. Um, red raspberry. This one is a wonderful, wonderful herb. Very high in nutrients, um, vitamins, and minerals. Um, this is wonderful for anyone who is of childbearing age who would like to get pregnant. Um, Dr. Christopher talked a lot about using red raspberry for anyone in that group, but it is wonderful for anyone. It is very high in vitamins and minerals. And so we have our own teas that we drink daily. 
Um, on Sundays, everybody has red raspberry tea. And so we don't drink it every day, but on Sundays we do. It's safe enough that you can drink it every day. Um, and it's great for anyone who is malnourished or anemic. Um, disclaimer, I'm educating, not telling you. Um, this one is hibiscus. So this is not the tropical plant you can get at Home Depot. Um, this is a different variety and I just drew a blank on it's Sabdorifa, I think is the variety, something Sabdorifa. Anyway, it looks just like an okra plant for those of you who live near me and have a farm or grow your own okra. Um, the flowers look just like the okra flowers, um, but these are, they taste like um, raisins. Um, if you, it's the calyx on the bottom of the flower, it gets almost like a rose hip that has a calyx underneath and you dry it and you can eat it. It's kind of like eating a, a, some kind of gummy snack that tastes like craisins. It's really good. It's wonderful for tea and it is fabulous for heart health and circulation. And so I'll put that in my heart teas. Um, this one is Tulsi and I love Tulsi, also called holy basil. Um, Tulsi is very calming and relaxing. It is an adaptogen like the Shisandra berry. Um, and so it is something you can take regularly. It just helps with calm and um, wonderful for the adrenals. We put this one in our bedtime tea because it tastes so good and is nice and relaxing. Um, then I have Eleuthero. Eleuthero is another adaptogen that is energizing without stimulating. And so I really like that one. And so I alternate that one in my adaptogens too. Um, I just decide, you know, what, what am I feeling like today? Um, so if I just know I'm, I'm going to have a lot going on today, um, it might be kind of stressful, then I will go for Eleuthero. Um, then I have ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is another calming adaptogen. So another one. So if I need a lot of energy, I use the Eleuthera. If I just want to be calm and relaxed today, another adaptogen, it's not going to be a sedative, is ashwagandha. Um, burdock root, we grow on our farm and dry it, but you can buy burdock root. Um, you can probably find it fresh in Asian stores. Um, it, it looks a lot like a long, big carrot um, that is brown. And in most um, Asian countries, they use it as a vegetable. I don't know why it's not so common here. We grow it here. Um, it's not really easy to grow because it does have long roots. And here where we live, it's hard play and it's hard to get those roots out, but it's doable. But it is called a blood cleanser. It is wonderful for the liver, detoxification, and for cleansing the blood. So if you know someone with cancer, burdock tea will provide wonderful nutrition. Um, it's something that I add to my broths. When I make broth, I will throw in a handful of burdock. Um, sometimes I'll even add it to like beans and things like that. Like I said, it's a vegetable in most other countries. It's just an herb um, here. Next, I have motherwort. So motherwort is wonderful for female hormone health and also for the heart. And uh, so this is something that I do put in my teas quite regularly. Um, the flavor is not great. Um, we grow it here. So if you live locally, you can grow your own motherwort, um, but it does have a lot of nutrition and health benefits. Next, I have red clover. Um, so Red clover is actually pink, and so it's not the bright red you see in fields, um, but it is wonderful for DNA repair and for the heart. Um, it is wonderful herb for someone who is struggling with cancer. Um, this is the, the Shisandra berry I was talking about. You can see it's kind of red. And this is the goldenrod. We save the leaves and then make tinctures and teas with the leaves. I already talked about that. Um, next, I have spirulina. Spirulina is a um, blue-green algae. You can see I'm very high in minerals. Doesn't taste very good, but I do put it in our green smoothies to make them extra green colored and to add some minerals, but I only put I'm a quarter of a teaspoon for two smoothies. And here is my milk thistle, so you can see it. I buy it as a seed. And I've seen recipes where people, you see milk thistle, I wrote it on there, um, where people will toast it and add it to salads. I don't really like the texture in my teeth, which is why I put it in my 
um, pepper grinder. Um, but it is wonderful. It even helps the liver to regenerate cells. And I think I'm just about finished here. This is my Molin. I talked about the flower oil for the ears. This is the leaves and the leaves very high in nutrition and wonderful for any of the glands. I take it specifically for um, thyroid health. And that is this hawthorn berries. Let's, oh, I can't believe they're not in a jar. Get a jar out. Here are the hawthorn berries. Can you see those? They're red and kind of hard. We put those in tea. Sometimes people will grind them down. Hawthorn berry is wonderful for the heart and circulation it is an antioxidant as well. And last is my Gota Cola. Gota Cola is another one that is very energizing. Um, it is, uh, I can't remember all of the benefits. They'll come to me in a minute. Um, but it is very energizing. And so I will put this in a morning tea. I will not put it in an afternoon tea because it may keep me from sleeping, even though it's not a stimulant. Um, so I love it. Um, my husband hates it. To me, if I have some Gota Cola with a little bit of licorice root, it tastes like sweet tea. And growing up here in the South, sweet tea is a big thing. And so I really, I really like it. He thinks it tastes like old tea. So maybe just have a little bit and try it. See what you think. Anyway, that is all the herbs I have over here. Um, one day I will go through all of the culinary herbs and tell you all of the benefits of that because I want you to use those herbs. You have herbs and spices in your kitchen that provide so many nutrients and are so wonderful for you and your health. Anyway, I don't see any questions. Um, let me know if you learned anything about these herbs. I guess I should tell you how I use them. Normally I will put them in a jar. I have jars behind me actually. So for my regular tea, um, dried herbs, it's normally a teaspoon per cup. So this is a quart. And so I make four quarts, I make four cups um, for me and four cups for my husband. And so we will put usually um, a little over, maybe a heaping tablespoon of herbs, but usually a combination. And so whatever we have, we put these in. So if it's dried like this, we do maybe a teaspoon of each. If it's the roots like this, normally you simmer roots for about 20 minutes when you make a tea. Um, I do mine overnight. And so I do throw them in and just leave them to soak overnight. But normally when you have roots, um, you do soak them overnight. Um, and you mean you use boil them for 20 minutes if you have roots like that. And if you have powders, like the slippery elm, um, I usually only do a half a teaspoon, a quarter to a half a teaspoon, depending on um, what I am using it for. Um, if you want to make it into a paste for a wound healing, then you may want um, more than that, like a tablespoon and mix it with water. Slippery elm is safe um, for all ages. And so that is great if you have a child who has some sort of wound. And if they have any kind of swelling from a bee sting or something, um, it is actually even drawing. And so it will help to draw out some of that swelling and help with that as well. Um, so for smoothies, I will usually put a teaspoon um, of different herbs, like the maca root. I'll put um, two teaspoons in because I make a smoothie for two people at a time. Um, if I'm using the reishi, I'll put a teaspoon of that dried um, in our smoothies. If I'm using the spirulina, only a quarter teaspoon because it doesn't taste really good. Um, bitter apricots, bitter apricot seeds, you should only have two to three um, per day per person. And so don't go overboard. It is bitter. You're not going to want to anyway. But they look just like almonds, but you want to limit that to two. Um, hopefully that helped you. Anyway, let me know if that helps. Um, comment, share, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube so that you can get the next video, I do a Q&A every Monday. Um, so on YouTube, this won't go out until Sunday. Anyway, all of you have a fabulous week.